welcome to this week's video. This week's video kind of rolled in a little bit late. It was because I had to finish my finals and I'm finally done with my second year. So this is my painting. Um, the very last painting I worked on for this year and, and I wanted to show the creative process of how I work on my paintings and just some general ideas about art and I'm answering a few questions that you guys sent me on the community post so yeah here it is hello <clears throat> this is a painting that will probably be the biggest piece that I've ever worked on or will work on um so this is originally a collage that I made in class. Yes, and I'm gonna make it into a giant painting. And this is actually due in three weeks, but I want to finish it by next week. Yes, that's me. Wish me luck. For most of my creative process, I would usually start by looking for inspiration. So either I would look for some visual inspiration, so I would go on Pinterest or Instagram and try to look for some kind of artist's work that might give me some ideas or just like images in general. So I would sometimes look at photography or paintings prints so it's really different every time I look for ideas um, but if I don't need a visual idea I would sometimes I would just hop on to any sort of media sort of app or just on YouTube sometimes too to look for some inspiration but when it comes to paintings um, I would look for inspirations or just Sometimes I just know what I'm doing, so I would just sketch out whatever that's in my head, which looks mostly horrible, and I usually try my best to work without reference, but I realize how difficult that is, so I usually use a reference. Um, and I would come up with a sketch, and after the sketch, I would kind of play around with it. So I would play around with the colors, the lines, with the design. So I would do a lot of things and most of the time when I create these sketches I would work on it traditionally on paper and then use my iPad to kind of quickly get out the color palettes and kind of fully envision of what the painting would look like when I would start it. I think this is one of the most important steps for me because I don't like to be drawing or like be painting things and not know what I like and then me going over the color or erasing whatever the paint or the, the whatever that is I don't even, I can't even speak but like I do not like to not know what I like so usually I would pre-plan everything on my iPad which I very very much love and adore and then I would bring that um, digital rendered sketch into a painting but it doesn't sound as long as I am saying it but once you do it once you know what you're doing sometimes I don't even finish the digital sketch um, so it's kind of different every time, but that's how I usually plan a painting, and also my prints as well. Someone asked me in the comments of my favorite part of my creative process, and for me, it's doing the details. For me, I love doing the little details, like adding highlights, that is like my favorite thing ever, and 
maybe a little bit of extra shadows, like big bold lines. I just love that. Um, I love doing lines. I love doing just painting big blobs of things, confident blobs, and that is my favorite part. Um, at least for my painting process. I'm not so sure with my printmaking process right now. Obviously, I love the printing part. Everything else is a little bit stressful, but like the printing part, it's awesome. Um, yeah. Another question I got was if I was naturally gifted or if I practiced. And I don't know how to answer this question, to be honest. Um, I don't want to sound rude. I think when I was a child, I used to think that I was pretty gifted in art. And I soon realized that what I did wasn't good. So, what I'm trying to say is that I did art because I was praised a lot of the times, and I only realized that pretty later on in my childhood, and even while I was on the cusp of adult life, I guess, um, I realized how pathetic my art was in that kind of way. And I, was, and I thought, and I knew that very well, so I didn't want to originally go to art school, because I was too scared, because I thought I was not naturally an artist, um, but my mom kind of encouraged me to go to art school, and I think that this has been one of the best decisions I made in my life, to be honest. I really, really enjoy art school. Um, it taught me a lot, not only just in the aspect of art, but also about the different language of art, if you know what I mean. I used to think some people are just better than me because they're just naturally better, but I realized that nobody's really naturally just better at art. Um, people work hard for it. And another thing I learned is that art is a very subjective thing. And to say one art is better than the other, or to say one artist is more talented than the other, is a bit too subjective. You probably know what I'm saying. You can't really compare anime with, let's say, Baroque art. They're different arts. They're both very difficult to do. And I feel like if you compare it together, both of those things on the same level, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I do think that art is a very subjective thing. Um, and you can't really measure it out and say that one is better or not. I feel like there is a difference in techniques. One can someone can do better techniques but like get better compositions. But I can't really say anyone's bad. Well, another person asked me if I have enough time to work on personal art. Um, I try my best to make schoolwork into my personal works. Um, as I advance through my university um, life, I've been getting more freedom with my work and it's been really helpful for me to make what I want in school. And yeah, that's I try my best to do that and the, this semester especially has been very, very great because all of my studio instructors were very free, I guess. They kind of let us explore with our own. Um, style and not with our own medium so there weren't any big rules or 
rubrics that were required for each of my projects. So, so before this semester, it was mostly all about how to work around different rubrics and making your own style within it. And a lot of the instructors would give a theme or a word or something to work on. And then we would find something that we would like to make from there. But this semester, it was mostly about them telling us to do things. But it was mostly kind of self-directed in a way. So we would find our own little prompts in our own work, in our own style. So in the beginning of the semester, I was so lost. My friends and I were very lost. We didn't know what we were doing. We were like, and we want, we want to be told to do things. We were like, this is hard. And yeah, we were, we were not used to it. But in the end, we got, we got the hang of it. And now that we understand how to do it, um, my friends and I are constantly talking about what we want to do next after this print ends or after this painting ends. So I do not have a lot of time when I'm in school. But over the summer, um, I do want to work on some personal projects, um, so hopefully I'll be able to do lots of creative work. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of going to a print studio to just print what I want, or paint a few paintings that I want, try to find my own style and all that. Another person asked how long it took me to develop my own style um, of art. And I just want to say, I don't think I have a style yet. yet. I don't think I have a style yet. And I was talking to a different professor about the idea of a style and with many of my peers and friends about how difficult it is for us to be explorative with our creative style so I have a very different style with um, printmaking and with painting so that is like a very big thing I'm still working on because for printmaking I have a very graphic and design based style it's not illustrative it isn't um but for my paintings, it's very painterly. You know what I mean? It's That's a painting. You know what I mean? If you look at my painting, it looks like a painting. Um, so I'm trying to find a style that I could kind of blend those two together. And also, I want to mix my media a little bit. So mixing silk screening with painting. So I haven't found my style yet. But I do want to settle on combining my two um, practices. Um, I thought this semester would be the last semester I would work on prints because I was so tired and so devastated from silk screening in the middle. And I was like, I don't know why I did this. And then towards the end, I found my jazz for printmaking. For silk screening, and I'm and I am currently very in love with it. Um, so I'm trying to think of different ways to work with printing and painting together, and that is all I can answer for this question. A lot of you asked about how I get over an art block, and I've only recently picked up this habit. Um, I realized doing collage really, really helps with art block. I feel like for art blocks, it's mostly about how to create ideas and develop sketches that is original to yourself. And it's really stressful to see a blank sheet of paper and not to create anything from it. It's just blank. And I realized how freeing collage is because you're only bringing um, things together and it's it's still kind of original and different but also still kind of inspiring and fun to work with so I think 
I'm picking up a lot with collages, either digital or traditional. I think digital works better sometimes, but sometimes the restriction of traditional collage is way better because you're kind of restricted to work with what you have. Yeah, I just really enjoy doing collages lately. So I do really recommend doing collage. It's a lot of fun. It is. And it's a lot less stressful than working on an original artwork right away. Another one of you guys asked how I stay consistent and how I stay concentrated and focused and how I motivate myself. I really don't know how to answer this question because I was never consistent with a lot of my works. So one thing I did consistently before I entered um, art school was there was a point in my life where I literally drew every single day um, and I made a rule to myself that I would finish five pages each day and it wasn't about the quality it was more about the quantity of the work that I kind of spilled out to myself and I feel like that sort of consistency that sort of habit building kind of helped me quite a lot um, later on through my art life but I don't do that anymore <laughs> so I can't really answer that consistency question but that is just an experience I had before going to art school and in my teenage years it helped me immensely setting a certain set of rules and being consistent and building a habit upon it will motivate yourself and then after you kind of have that motivation concentration kind of and the focused um, energy kind of follows with everything that I've just talked about I'm not sure if that makes any sense but that is the sort of I guess rule that I have with myself but yeah I just I just want to say that I guess I'm not sure if that answered any of your question but that is how I kind of figure it out Oh
Be there.